Welcome back, abominable creature, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today we're looking at the biggest city ever in a Bethesda game, Starfield's New Atlantis. You're first introduced to the city through its starport. It leaves a relatively good impression. You're way at the bottom level and buildings tower over you. The green tree things really play off the sleek white buildings nicely. Before we leave the landing pads, I want to acknowledge the scale here. Not the scale of the buildings, but the whole starport. This reminds me of Camp McCarran in Fallout New Vegas. It's not very often Bethesda games give you just a raw, flat plane. It makes sense they'd want one here. After all, this is the biggest city in the game. You want all this parking space for ships. Well, it's just two spots here. That doesn't seem like enough. Maybe this lowers and there's like a parking garage underground? Sure, why not? After you leave the starport, you start to get a feel for the city. It's so modern, stunning architecture, sleek sculptures, and bizarre fashion. People watching in this game sure is something, and they all hit you with that Bethesda stare. There's an elevator tucked away that can take you to a few locations, one of which being the Waterfall Promenade. Of course, I know what a promenade is, but just for the people out there that don't, Uh, a promenade is a paved public walk, and that's all it is up here. Just a little area for a stroll, nothing more. I like places like this in games. It really fills out the world and makes it believable. I'm sure some quest does bring you here. This is too big an area for a game to not direct you to at some point. Once you get a boost pack, you can do a little parkour and climb up a level. It feels weird to call this an out-of-bounds area, because it's just another part of the world. But it's obvious this is a place you're not supposed to go. There's no paved path up here, no entrances or exits, and barely any detail to the ground. There are some vines and rocks dotted around, but come on, they didn't think you'd walk around up here. Look at this corner. This texture is stretched, right? Ah, I can't clown on them too much for this. The city as a whole is so detailed. Of course there's going to be some areas that were put on the back burner, so they could really focus on the areas players would see. Seriously, who would come up here? Well, other than me and my compulsive need to explore areas the developers didn't think I would. Now, let's look at what the developers did want us to see. Hopping on board a tram, we're taken to the heart of New Atlantis. This was definitely a confusing city to explore at first. There's a lot of winding paths, and they aren't quite connected in ways that make sense at first glance. And it's not really helpful that this is all you have in terms of a map in this game. Just a blue void with little dots to show the elevation. It can be useful for empty landscapes, but the opposite of useful in a dense city like this. Regardless, even if you had a detailed map, this would be a daunting place to explore. But once you dip your toes in, it makes a bit more sense. Over here is the commercial district. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to do, at least right now. I'm sure there's a dozen quests just waiting to be discovered. And there are a couple shops to visit. Something actually super cool about the world design here is that a lot of the shops are just in the open world, no loading screens between them and the main area. I just got off a big Skyrim playthrough, so the loading screen when entering buildings is burned into my brain. Don't get me wrong, this game still has loading screens like that. But it's cool that so many of these areas are open. Like, think of how many buildings there are in Skyrim that you've walked past but never entered, never learning what the interiors might look like. 
Here you can just take a glance as you walk by. I came across this building at 1600 hours, and I was taken aback at how beautiful it was. I'm used to seeing Bethesda worlds with an orange tint of a sunset, but seeing it peer through the glass and coat the walls is striking. I can imagine sitting in this building waiting for an appointment. It really grounds the world. It reminded me of how interiors in these games usually feel so disconnected from the exteriors. Like this building next door. The design on the front looks nice, sure, and so does the inside. They play off each other well. But it feels like you enter a pocket dimension when you go through the door. There are no windows letting in light connecting you to the outside environment. It creates a bizarre feeling. A bizarre feeling unique to Starfield. Because all other Bethesda games handle interiors the same, but these feel uniquely artificial. Maybe it's the minimalistic textures and overall environment design? I don't know. Do you feel it too? Or am I gaslighting myself here? Regardless, I like the open-air buildings of New Atlantis. The building for the Settled Systems News Network caught my eye. It doesn't necessarily tower over the other buildings near it, but it is distinct. I walk in, and it's just a lobby. There's the main journalist guy and a board receptionist. This is all there is to the primary news source of one of the two main governments in all of the Settled Systems. I don't even know what to say to this. There's obviously more to the building, look up there. But how do people access it? Is there a secret door somewhere? Why wouldn't Bethesda put a single door in here that you can't go through? That would create the illusion that this could be a massive media outlet, rather than just a dude and his receptionist. The Residential Area This is where you get to dabble in the glitz and glamour of futuristic living. Fancy apartment buildings and clothing stores. I mean, what else is the future if not that? This area gets a bit more playful with its use of greenery. This shot right here with the trees and the lights lighting them up at night, it's nice. Deeper in, there's a play area for kids. It's a uh, maybe not the most exciting thing ever, but it is something. The fact that the grass here is just a raw texture with no foliage details on top, I can't tell if it's supposed to be super well manicured or just an area they forgot to add detail to. For as much crap as I'll give Bethesda about weird little things like that, they go all out on the interiors here. All across New Atlantis, each building has its own unique theme and feel. From the Athena Tower lobby to EIT Clothiers, they're all memorable in their own little way. I have a soft spot for CJ's though. It's definitely futuristic like most of the other places, but it still retains a bit of humanity, especially with all the plants around. You can go up some of the apartment buildings to a higher floor. In Orion Tower, you're taken to floor 9, and it's just a hallway. It's so clinical, sleek. A little sanitation bot roams around, cleaning up the floors. You can actually interact with it, and it makes a sad little beep. Electronic groan, the captions say. That actually got a laugh out of me the first time I saw it. Poor guy. Most of the doors are inaccessible in here, except for one, which is just locked. And this is a Bethesda game, so you know we getting in there. Huh. Definitely still reminiscent of apartments today, but with a slight futuristic twist. Anything interesting in here? An encased alien trilobite. A little creepy, but uh, okay, sure. Ooh, they're slippers. Do you think they'd lose their mind if I took only one of these? A sandwich, with a single bite taken out of it. Must have been in a hurry to leave. I'll take care of that for them. Alright, I was never here. At the end of the hallway is a little room just for hanging out. I will hang out in here, thank you very much. Scrubsy and I will enjoy some time together.
We'll look at the last district, then my favorite spot in New Atlantis. This is the Mast District. Its defining feature are all these trees growing around the paths. The previous districts had a little bit of greenery, but this is practically a jungle. I imagine it'd be nice to come and take a walk here, get a break from the minimalistic and clinical look of everywhere else, and be one with nature. I didn't really talk about it earlier, but the trees here are super unique. They're almost like mushrooms. It feels properly alien while still reminding you of Earth. There's one building I want to talk about in this district. The Lodge. The Lodge is home to Constellation, a group dedicated to exploring and documenting the galaxy. Joining this group is one of the first things you do in the game, and this building really impresses. At a glance, it might not even strike you as something from the far future. It's kind of rustic in here, way different from everything else we've looked at. The Lodge exudes a sense of familiar comfort into this otherwise futuristic city. This would be a pretty cool place to call home for you and your friends. There's the main living area, lots of books to read and models to observe. Go through these doors and you get a little taste of the outside world. Plants dangling from above and pouring out of planters below. This alien table thingy is a real standout to me. Heading upstairs, you find yourself in a veritable maze of hallways and doors. Once you join, you're informed you're given a room. Sweet! But, uh, where is it? I wandered up and down the hallway, checking every room for a bed I could sleep in, but I couldn't find it. Turns out, it's this door. I just skipped over it. Hopefully you understand, there's literally 17 doors on the second floor here. This does seem a pretty well thought out place of lodging for a group this size. You have the obvious bedrooms, but then there's a bathroom, storage, cleaning closet, meeting room, all that you'd expect to find. Only thing that sticks out to me as not being present is food storage. Then again, maybe they don't make food here. Maybe they come down to chunks a couple times a day for some chunks. Why make food yourself when such fine dining is but a jaunt away? Overall though, the Lodge is a nice little place to call home. Alright, my favorite spot in New Atlantis. There are a lot of cool little spots you can reach if you scale down the side of New Atlantis that are all pretty tempting, but none of these truly speak to me. Instead, let's go down this elevator next to the SSNN office. This spot is kind of like the Waterfall Promenade in that it doesn't seem like there's anything of note here. Maybe there will be in a future quest, I don't know. But for now, as it exists in-world, it's just a nice place to hang out. Walking towards the balcony on the south, you're given a beautiful view. You're reminded that this isn't just a traditional Bethesda game. You can really walk all the way out there and keep going. After all, this is a whole planet. Getting this view from high up confronts you with the scale of Starfield. Get subscribed to see my more in-depth tour of Starfield when that comes out. I wanted to have a video out pretty quickly, but you have to take your time with these games, so I'll play some more and work on one in the near future. In the meantime, I'll be putting out a video or two on Skyrim. You definitely don't want to miss those. Thanks for watching and see you next time.